previously on Kingdom Corn. We had to get all the way back in a lovely, beautiful way. Yeah, all the way to a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> I had to hit that cheesy rhyme because when you have got an amazing lightsaber like this one, I gotta tell you, you say some weird, crazy things. This was the Mace Windu. Guys, go check that out. But as for today, I don't know if it'll get better than that Mace Windu, but I'm thinking that there might be a possibility with this Dark Zone Pro Tournament Edition. Oh, yeah. It is a miracle to be here today. Welcome back. This is is now officially lit what is going on guys it is kingdom time and i'm so glad that you guys are here to make it pop off you guys check this out today i'm going to be doing a full unboxing review finally for the dark zone pro tournament edition i have actually caught this on a bit of a sale that's when I decided to go ahead and hit that thing up. So today, I'm going to see if it's worth it or should I have left this thing sitting on Amazon. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. Getting right into it. If you guys love my channel and you love my videos, then I would appreciate you guys to show your support. Oh, snap. Woo, baby. <laughs> okay, now let me finish. I would appreciate you guys if you would hit that subscribe button so that I can see you guys every single video and then you guys could be here to witness this lovely unboxing such as the MK 1.2 and all the other cool stuff that we have. All right, woo. I appreciate you guys for all of your lovely, generous support. This right here, I already know is a pin on the Dark Zone 1. Point. Uh, I'm confused at this point, but on the previous version, there were like pins that you just stick in there and it was kind of weird because the pins just stick out on the other side. So we're gonna see how much better the new 1.2 version really will be. Basically, almost all the same accessories as the previous version. One thing I am clearly noticing is although they have this, that is the only thing that is not half length right here although that is a half limb converter. Already, that is some interesting features. Let's not waste any more time just talking about it and being conceptual. Let's go ahead and take this thing out. Come on, guys, it is kingdom time. Wow, guys, here it is, live in my hand. I am feeling it. This thing is legit. <laughs> I also came back with these really cool goggles eye protection if you're going to be out there at war going crazy shooting all over the place then i assume with a blaster like this that you will probably want to put these on to make sure that your eyes are good for the next battle uh-oh Ah. All right. All right, guys. I'm starting off this thing a little bit positive just by off of that prime and just by the feel of this rubber grip. The other one had like a rubber grip and I was definitely a huge fan of that. So I am definitely glad to see that thing reworked into the next model version of this. They have got some sideways Picatinny rails as well as the big long one on the top. I am also noticing on these sites, they have these green and up top, this purple or pinkish color 
thingy. Looking through this site, it is pretty cool. I can totally see what that actually is for because the two green dots lines up with the one pink dot and then it kind of almost reminds you of having like an electric uh, laser sight or a battery powered laser sight except it's more analog and that and that is a pretty cool thing <laughs> this is a very lovely design right here it says dart zone pro i really love when they have a nice little fancy little label my eyes can definitely appreciate a blaster of this type of caliber and quality that grip right there that i just put my hands on something definitely a bit special mm. it's just something about a grip that when you put your hands on it you really just don't want to let go they actually have grooves it's not really just a big clunky brick like some of the blasters out there i love it when this thing actually molds and grooves to your fingers it makes you all the way into the blaster comfortable nobody can run up on you and scare you and make you drop it because you're gonna love holding this grip just so much that uh ain't nothing gonna get this out of your hands especially with that rubber oh yeah dudes <laughs> That's what's up. Here on uh, the top, I don't know if this is removable, but on the previous version, this little tip could come off or on if you want it to. Ah, there you go. Yep, this is also removable. Only difference is that this came with it already on here, right out of the box. One way or another, I'm pretty sure that this doesn't really do too much or affect anything. It is just for the look, apparently. That prime, for a blaster such as this, a pro level, it is pretty hard. But like I said, pro level, that is something that you can really expect. You don't think that's going to be an easy, simple prime on something that's supposedly going to shoot over 120 FPS. Just throw a number out there. I don't know how this will actually perform when we get out there. We're going to see, though. <laughs> Whoa. Ah, if I'm not mistaken, you must pull that back first. That prime isn't strong. I'm just a bit weak. Sorry, guys. <laughs> cool. Now we have the full scope of this blaster. These little pins are way better than the previous ones because it's simply one piece that you stick in there. It holds firm, solid. You don't have to worry about whether you put it in right or if it's gonna hold up properly. Now to the other one's credit, it did hold up. I've never had the pin to come out or any such type of thing. Everything was sturdy, but still this mechanism is a lot simpler and just makes you feel more secure in general about the blast. And for my next piece, or for the piece that came with the blaster, <laughs> we have got a stock. Boom. I am always intrigued about whatever stock comes with these blasters. Okay, okay. Typical Dark Zone stock. I am kind of like underwhelmed at the looks of this stock. I'm not talking about yet the functionality, but the plastic on this stock for a pro level, it's a little toyish right here. So when you pay a lot of money for a blaster, you know, it's not something you want to feel good about to have toyish parts. You want everything to just feel all the way premium. They've got some parts on here that make you go, okay, okay. <laughs> but you don't really want to see like plastic that just could be on a regular $50, $40 Nerf blaster, $20 Nerf blaster. <laughs> It seems to function properly, so we're gonna not worry too much about that issue. Guys, these sites right here with the colors, I wish you guys can actually look through them for yourselves and see, but it is pretty dang nice, y'all. <laughs> this right here is a swivel. I noticed that looking down here, there is this swivel, and with all these buttons, I am assuming that, yeah, there we go. The stock is a folding stock. What a new and cool feature for a Dark Zone blaster. Now, I don't know why that makes sense because when you have a folding stock, it would be good if the stock didn't simply come back off like that. 
because if the stock comes on and off, then why on earth would you need the hassle of also folding it up? I feel like this was just an added expense to this blaster, which you know we really don't need. Hey, but do your thing, Dark Zone. I'm really not gonna talk too much about this feature simply because I feel like it's just so pointless. Either you're down with it or you're not. Either way, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, this blaster comes with these lime green, bright neon type of darts. These are the short darts, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and load this up. And as you guys can see here, I've got my chronograph set up and ready. We're gonna test this FPS, find out what this bad boy really is capable of. I'll load it up. Oh my goodness, that can't be right. Holy cow. All right guys, I don't know, maybe it's tripping. 139, that seems a lot more like it. 138.8, 168, 231, 225. Guys, 139, 214, 191, 234. Oh my gosh, guys, woo. <laughs> Look at that. One of these dart heads done busted off because this thing's shooting so hardcore. Oh, well, man. guys, it is time for the range test. We're going to have some good fun with this blaster. I can see that already. There were no jams and misfires as far as my chronograph test went. So we're going to be good and ready for this one. Come on, guys. Let's take it to the kingdom. Woo. Hold up, guys. Forgot something. Time is. Oh, oh bull's eye, baby. Down. Okay, guys, I just had a quiet bit of an issue. You really have to know what you're doing when you find this blaster. If you don't find this all the way right, it could get stuck and bounce back. I didn't shoot it yet, but I already know I'm about to have a jam. Yup. Let's go for it anyway. It just shot two. Okay, that did not feel right at all. What just happened? Well, for one thing, I am out of ammo. So let's start there. <laughs> Clip number two. Ooh, man, what was that? Guys, I am impressed and unimpressed at the same time. Didn't know that was a thing, but it happened today. More on that a bit later. For now, I gotta do just one more round, guys. Is that cool with y'all? All right, I thought so, I thought so. <laughs> Come on. I see your potential, MK1.2. I see your potential. Come on. Oh my goodness, what is that? Crud. All right, that's enough guys, before I break this thing. It 
have a lot of fun shooting this blaster. This thing shoot very, very hard. This thing shot also very, very accurate. Hard, accurate. I'm like, what else can you really ask for? Dude, it was loads of fun pumping rounds at those targets. The way that I hit those targets, if those were people, I'm gonna tell you they would not want to play against you after that. Right there, I probably made someone just quit the game altogether. This blaster really does that to people, and that is a very cool thing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and let's not forget, they have these rails all over, so you can get whatever accessory and put them on yourself, add that to it. Then you have the intimidation factor. Then people really ain't going to want to play again. You're going to be on that field all by yourself if you bring this out there. Now, let's talk about the weird stuff. As you guys may have noticed when I was shooting, there were quite a bit of issues. For one, I was saying that if you don't prime this properly, I feel like it's easy for this to actually get jammed up because if you just do one wrong move, everything has to be precise and everything has to be fully functional. You have to put this all the way to the top for this to shoot. You gotta pull it all the way back for this thing to load. Everything has to be on point. But when it does hit, I will tell you it hits and it hits good. And that right there just makes me want to forgive that whole thing. Now, on the other hand, I mean, uh, when you have a blaster, especially if you're going to a nerf battle, you want your blaster to be smooth. You don't want to have hiccups and issues. And that brings me to my next point. It's like, you want to be able to get into the flow and just go at it. Now, I will tell you guys, if you go any faster than that, just forget about it. This blaster is going to lock up on you right away. I'm on the fence because this is an amazing blaster to shoot. You guys saw the FPS test and it feels even better than that. Yeah, and on the other hand, that whole thing where you can't really pump shots as hard and fast as you really would like to, you're going to try to shoot as fast as you can. You're not gonna be sitting here thinking about, oh, I gotta go all the way to the front. I gotta come all the way to the, you know, you're not gonna be thinking about any of that type of stuff. You're just gonna be going as fast as you can, running around, trying not to get hit, and just, you're not gonna be thinking about um, how to technically prime this properly. So on that type of note, this blaster is kind of a big letdown because if you wanna have a really cool, nice, good, hard shooting blaster, it also needs to work. It needs to work smoothly. You wanna be confident with it. I mean, I felt like this thing was gonna break. That's why I put the thing down and I just stopped using it all together. Kingdomers, if a blaster makes you wanna stop shooting it because you're afraid that it's gonna blow up and fall apart on you, do you guys consider that as a good blaster? I don't, I don't know, I'm asking you guys. <laughs> I do not want to be having that type of fear. This thing has got a little bit of issues. Although it's lovely, I like the look, I like the build. I even like the sound, oh, right there, it didn't prime right. See, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy type of a thing. Now, will I recommend this blaster? Guys, that's on you. I hope that you got all the information that you really needed for this blaster. Now, on that note, before I get out of here, you guys got to know, always, anything is possible if you believe. We have got to keep believing. Maybe if we do, these blasters will get more functional. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> you never know. But as long as you keep believing, there's always hope. So yeah, guys, you guys be easy. You guys stay great. Hey, and also, if you're watching this in real time, have a very, very Merry Christmas. That is from Kingdom Corn. All right, lovely people. Until next time. <laughs>